Hi everyone, a warm welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, we are continuing our AI theory. In the last video, we talked about uh, artificial intelligence as a general term. We talked about machine learning, deep learning, and how this is related to data science. We looked into uh, some of the deep learning uh, methodologies, for example, neural network, artificial neural networks, and we, we did talk about them. This video uh, is again gonna be a little bit more theoretical we're not going to talk mostly uh, technical terms but i just wanted to cover this because we are again on this journey of learning about ai at the same time again i'll just uh, reiterate this i'm not going to edit these videos so if you find the speed of the video a little slower please feel free to watch them in 1.5x or 1.25x whatever suits you better at the same time i would really appreciate if you can like and add comments to this uh, video so that it encourages me as well uh, if you find it useful obviously in this video we are gonna keep it very short we are going to talk about common myths about ai its social impact certain risk associated with ai and certain challenges that we see foreseeable future related to ai so uh, common myths about ai when we talk about it uh, mostly because of uh, the way ai has become very famous these days since the uh, chat GPT came along uh, during COVID most of the uh, people might have a myth or may start thinking that AI programs are smarter than human beings which is not the case like we talked about in our previous videos AI programs are very efficient LLM models can be better than human beings in certain specific tasks right for example playing a game of go maybe ai can do anything uh, maybe better than anyone um, uh, any human uh, can do right but overall in context of as a human being we can do lots of other things right so ai is not nowhere near uh, in terms of uh, human being uh, when we talk about the capability and knowledge but ai programs are becoming uh, better at solving complex problem problems uh, day by day right the second myth is that AI works just like human brain, which is not true. We talked about leap, the deep learning, artificial neural networks, and we talked about how the neurons within AI, artificial neural networks are based on human brain, but they are not exactly the same. Essentially, they are algorithms, mathematical formulas, which need certain data to get trained on. And based on that data that was used to train those, uh, those models, it will make future uh, predictions for us but it's not exactly like human brain for, for sure another myth is ai programs are conscious and might have feelings which is again not true um, agi is uh, not there yet so so that's another myth that we generally come across sometimes ai programs could take over well uh, lots of uh, conspiracy theories and lots of people taking things out of context which is again not true ai program ai means it's similar to how we evolved through industrial age to to uh, data age or you know computers evolved uh, <coughs> in india if you talk about earlier we used to have those typewriters not even in india everywhere i guess uh, we used to have those typewriters and eventually uh, what happened those typewriters got replaced by computer programmers so if you were a typewriter in 1980s or uh, 90s eventually you had to learn ms word start typing in uh, in computer rather than using the typewriter right similar to that on the similar line ai will change whatever we are doing in today's world and we'll have to adopt ourselves probably it'll help us do things uh, which are more creative rather than doing the the repetitive things that we already talked about social impact again there are positive and negative social impacts i have already i have only mentioned the uh, the positive ones here obviously in the health detecting disease sooner developing treatment plans affordable healthcare service via ai and even in one of our previous videos i talked about recent uh, uh, award Nobel Prize for chemistry was given to a person who was actually related to AI uh, Google's uh, Google's uh, AI program right 
I forgot the name right now, but it was uh, it, it it can be useful to to read your DNA and predict your future uh, health issues, uh, right? In education, helping student learn to write. Um, ecology and humanitarian relief also predicting global disaster for example right better so we we have every uh, year so many global uh, problems right uh, for example certain um, areas getting too much rain certain area not getting rain so those kind of things can be uh, helpful if we have ai right safety concerns Again, lots of safety concerns with AI, malicious AI usage, fake news, cyber attacks, phishing attacks, identity theft, lack of AI robustness, and AI's lack of explainability. So, for example, if I open this, I was looking into an article, and this is the article number um, <clears throat> in 1907-07982. If you go here, go to Google and search about, for this article number, you will find it. Essentially, uh, they are talking about the AI ethics, global AI ethics. And in this article, if you think about what are the social implications of AI in a negative way, they talk about uh, amplifying the inequality, right? Because AI, again, will be, um, can be, can have some dark sides, right? Like they are mentioning here. For example, in in uh, job recruiting, what they have noticed is that AI tools can be biased against women, right? So because AI tools are as good as the data that we have used to uh, train the AI models on, and AI data can have biases, right? So uh, if AI is not used correctly, it can be uh, causing the inequality right it can uh, amplify the inequality um, across the countries and regions if you talk about the global pattern right so certain uh, countries like us western europe and china may actually benefit from ai whereas certain low income countries or middle income countries may actually be more vulnerable to the negative social impacts of ai Right, and they are less likely to get benefit from the positive out outcomes. Uh, for example, countries like India, right? So we don't know what would be the what would be the impact of AI on jobs, especially on India, right? As compared to obviously in US, where uh, the AI is actually being developed, um, uh, more control on AI is from US and China right now they'll probably definitely benefit from AI, but at the same time, what would be the impact on countries like India, right? Deepening the digital divide. So certain marginalized communities, which are already marginalized, doesn't have access to, to, uh, uh, to these uh, technologies right now. In future, they may get more marginalized, right? They might not have uh, specialized skill needed for AI especially girls and women in certain countries right if you talk about middle east not all of i don't want to call out any special region but specifically lower or middle income countries right we may struggle uh with these issues the negative impacts of uh, ai ai labor exclusion they talk about that so again uh, they talk about that most of the gains are predicted in us and china and uh, and certain uh, low or middle income countries may be bearing the burnt of AI driven job loss because you see uh, mostly low skilled jobs were anyways outsourced by US right so they didn't care if it is right now they also don't care if uh, AI is doing your job or it is being outsourced to some offshore uh, countries right so Although, if you see, according to PwC, there would be 15.7 trillion in wealth AI will generate globally by 2013, 70% will occur to China and America. So most of the positive impacts of AI is going to be in these countries, China and America, right? So there could be other global risks that they have talked about. Um, uh, vulnerable groups, uh, deep fake, negative uh, social impacts, um, 
lots of things so uh, i don't want to get uh, more into the negative sides of ai but as you can see and if you want you can search this uh, article in google if you search it you will uh, get it uh, directly uh, there are lots of risks still involved with ai and we need to make sure that we have proper governance around ai that's why it's you know that pivotal moment in this journey uh, that we are on i think this is going to shape our 50 60 or 100 years going forward so 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 this is again uh, becoming a very important uh, event for us how do we ensure that ai is safe and will benefit all of humanity rather than helping or benefiting certain uh, countries or uh, certain section of society uh i have already covered challenges with ai uh, data challenges right how the personal data is used by ai for example in india you have aadhar system right uh if ai gets access to that data how, how we ensure that ai is uh, da- that particular data is not used by bad actors right how do we make sure that ai doesn't or uh, the data that we use to feed the ai doesn't have biases or do we can we overdo it right for example if you search about founding fathers of america and ai shows up certain uh, brown women or asian women and men which is not true right so ai has to be accurate it doesn't have to be biased but at the same time we don't want to make sure that just for the sake of neutrality it shows wrong data environment challenges co2 emission so if you go to google and search about co2 emission with ai you would notice that 60 70 or 80% of the data center that is currently um, using co2 emission causing co2 emission is because of ai because google uh, meta all of all of these cloud providers which are running our ai uh, llms obviously needs lots of energy and power to run itself and that causes lots of co2 emission right you can see and notice that uh, how the data center cloud as well as the chipset industry is growing because of the demand of ai ai need computing power ai need computing sources to learn and obviously uh, work at at the end of the day it's a software all right so it it can cause global warming right cloud compute needed to enable and run ai so that's again another challenge that we have to uh, face how do we make efficient artificial intelligence which benefits all of us ai governance like i talked about earlier right how do we make sure that the countries which has control over ai doesn't uh get all the benefits at the same time how do we make sure that there is no social divide digital divide or amplifying the inequality those th- type of things that we have talked about earlier before i uh, proceed uh, i just wanted to also talk about myths again because we have already talked about myth but this is a ai.google uh, article on exploring the six myths so similar things that we have already talked about ai machine learning deep learning all are same thing this is again a myth we have already talked about this in our previous video ai is a umbrella term and it's not actually a very spe- there is no very specific definition to ai and machine learning and deep learning are part of ai but ai is a bigger term the second uh, myth could be that ai systems are inherently uh, unfair which is not true right so it depends on what kind of data you have fed ai so you cannot think that it would be unfair by default or it could be fair by default right it depends on how the data was provided but again that's again a myth that based on the data whatever the data we feed the outcome uh, outcome from the llms or ai would be the similar it can be that we design ai llm models in such a way that the that we can have certain filters and synthetic data that can remove the problems with the existing data that, that we have fed it but it's again a myth all ai systems are black bo- black box far less explainable than non ai techniques which is again not true uh, because we have also talked about neural networks and uh, and we know that based on certain data and uh, mathematical formulas how how it has made those decisions uh, again ai will make human labor obsolete which is again not true it talks about the similar kind of uh, 
technological breakthroughs uh, where we come from the cotton gin to the personal computer i talked about typewriters um, earlier right so it depends on how we take it it's again a natural progression in terms of our evolution as a race ai is approaching human intelligence although ai can uh, outperform human beings in uh, complex tasks like uh, it says playing a game of go uh, but they their scope remains very narrow narrow and brittle right so it's also talking about the same thing that they can be good at certain things but they're not good at many things and we as a human can do a lot of different things uh, good so we we ai is not uh, not uh, approaching the human intelligence um, anytime soon and the last one is uh, ai systems are only as good as the data they train on again uh, i'd already talked about it when we talked about the ai system are inherently unfair uh, if you see there are four ingredients needed for ai to work uh, data obviously what we feed uh, models on algorithm right that's basically uh, the second part and then we have the hardware and human talent so while data is important but it's not the only thing right we have algorithms we have hardware and the human talent so how do we uh, know real world data set anyway is perfect right anyway the in real world data set will have biases it may be incorrect it may be missing certain things right so it is possible to address uh, data related shortcomings in uh, data by for example you have uh, you can create uh, formulations by sampling the data creating some certain synthetic data building certain constraint into models so that you can filter out a certain things so these are all myths technical myths or uh, you know normal myths related to uh, to ai that i wanted to cover before we continue and uh, last thing impact of ai on jobs i have already i think talked about it much now but some task will be automated and it could be that even the job will remain for example attorney can use ai right to go through hundreds of pages and by just getting the summary of whatever a case or history they want to get right summarizing the financial report if you are an analyst and there is a quarterly financial report that came out for a company uh, whose stock you hold or you are interested in you don't have to read everything right you can go to chat gpt right now uh, and summarize the report new jobs will be created for sure research and design right we have so many challenges with ai i just talked about that right challenges and uh, uh, concerns safety concerns right so we we, we would need uh, people and uh, uh, research and design related to everything right how do we can control fake news cyber phishing identity theft all of these things are going to be important in future and we would need uh, people to solve these problems for us so what is the most important thing if if you if you're watching just this video and if you reached here i really appreciate that um, if you want to take one thing out of this video i would just say continuous learning and education is very important ai is changing even if it was not ai the world was anyway changing very fast so we need to make sure that we are continuously learning at the same time we are also taking uh, care of our health <laughs> because that's i didn't mention there but that's also important uh, mental well-being and physical well-being and then we continuously learn about technology because uh, if you are watching this channel i'm i'm sure you are uh, probably related to technology somewhere or other but anyways uh, so that's the impact of ai on jobs uh, very uh, brief uh, uh, summary there and uh, that's it for this video in next video we'll talk about fundamentals of machine learning we will try to now go a little bit deep into it because up until now we are mostly talking about theoretical things right but you know this is also important because if you are learning something which is very technical before you 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 go into the technical details you should understand like why we are doing it what would be the business impact future impact what are the things that you are trying to solve with this technology and i think those are very important before we start doing the technical stuff so in next video hopefully we'll talk about certain fundamental uh, things about machine learning and we'll continue going deep into uh, technical stuff related to ai I hope you found this video useful. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye for now.